Greetings, people. Thoughts on gaming in general, as well as a video about a couple different games that I've been looking into, so you can hear my opinion on what I think about crypto gaming. First of all, this channel, like three years ago, started when it came to gaming. I mean, my oldest and still most popular video is still about crypto blades, and that's how it was about three years ago. Now, back then, you clicked and you got some points. In Axie, you had a team and some breeding mechanisms, but you clicked and had some points. And since then, gaming has evolved quite a little bit when it comes to crypto. While the entire market is up like 10% since last week, and gaming in general like 20 to 30%, anything that has to do with gaming, like the underlying infrastructure, so I am Axe for Mutable, built on Beam, tokens like Miria, for example, they're all up by quite a bit. And while that is the first step on recovering the last all-time high, the moment any of these games takes off, everything else in this category is going to pump back quite a lot. The whole market cap is less than $22 billion, and I think there are more than a billion people in the world that play games on a regular basis. So while it might be difficult to find the right game to invest into, if you just want to buy one of the tokens, you can at least play some of the games, and then if they have future airdrops, already start farming points for them, or simply get a better understanding on the stage Web3 Gaming is at right now. Last year when I talked about a couple games, like Alluvium for example, I also tried out the World Wide Web Alpha, and that's the first thing for today. Now my account from back then, because I think it was the alpha slash beta, the things weren't saved in here, so for me it would be a new game in order to play it. And this was I think the first Web3 game that I played where I thought, if this one wouldn't be crypto related, and it had absolutely nothing to do with that, and it would simply be a game on Steam, would I still like it? And the answer was yes. Since then, the past seven, eight months, they had a whole bunch of different updates. Recently, they, I think, won the first spot on Discord Play as a reward, as an award over here. So they got the grand prize for that. They have a super active community, and the game is pretty fun. If we go to some of the recent gameplay from three months ago, just to give you an overview of what it's about, you join the desert. I mean, they have different names to everything, but you go into the desert and you have your character and it's a round-based game in which every single round you defeat a wave of enemies, you get power-ups in the meantime, you get some XP to level up, make your character stronger, hope to survive, and then you have lots of different quests in the main town available for which you can farm the items when you go out into the desert. Now, back then, when you died in the desert, your entire inventory got wiped out, and that was the reason why I kind of stopped playing, because I farmed for like an hour straight, because I sucked at the game, I farmed for an hour for a quest, didn't put it into my bank, into my treasury, went out, died, and then lost all my items, and the uh, you know, uh. which means to the faint of heart, it didn't help me. But it also taught me that I'm worse at gaming than I expected. Now, there are a bunch of different weapons, you can farm different gear, and at least back then, it was simply based on gameplay. Now, I'm not too sure, honestly, if they have a token or if so, when that gets released. This video is more about, is it fun to play? And the answer is yes. If you can still join, and I'm pretty sure you can, just check out the Discord and community. This is generally fun to play, even if it has nothing to do with crypto or money. But then, on top of the foundation of this is fun to play, there will eventually, or might be even already, be the whole part where you can farm items, you can play the economy, so there will be a marketplace, you can buy and sell things, there are different items that you can grind and craft and then sell to other players. All of that, I think, is happening. They have a ton of different updates every single month. And just when it comes to having fun, this is pretty much up there. And then there is Meta Rush by Muria. Well, Muria is the Web3 gaming platform that builds like the underlying foundation where projects can be built on. And I think they have like 270 plus projects that are building on this right now. They have zero gas fees on their layer 2 integration. There's now focus on one of the games that they developed called Meta Rush. They got X Activision, Blizzard, and Ubisoft people working on this. It is available for early access on Epic Games right now. So even though it says coming soon in September, pretty sure you can already play it. Maybe there's some qualification. They have a Discord that you can join, a growing community, and that is free to play. It is a platform battle royale, and kind of like the video shows done here, the main thing they do is multiple different stages of, it's a lobby, let's say of like 20, 30, 50 people, and you have to compete and win a round in order to advance to the next round with a couple of people dropping out every single stage, which means, let's say it's 20 people at first, and then 14, and then top six, and then top three, and then the final round in order to find who wins the entire thing. It's casual, but also competitive. They have lots of different skins in here available, pretty fun games as well in a more futuristic space setting with the last one standing rule in order to crown a champion at the end of the games now every now and then on their twitter and discord they have some giveaways that are going on some campaigns on zealy where you can simply play the game get some points here and there and then qualify for some rewards well right now is the starting moment for this whole boron when it comes to gaming 
there will be a whole bunch of stuff that gets released for gaming, so anything in a gaming category will go up by a lot, simply by having the right narrative. Kind of like when AI was super hyped last year, render token went from like $1.50 to $12, not because of what it does, but because it's the biggest project with an AI focus. That's generally it. It's still a great project, but it's in the right narrative, so it gets the 8x multiplier, and went from like 1 billion to 8 billion. Now anything in gaming can do the same thing with an even bigger multiplier, as there are like a billion people in the world, if not more, that game on their computer, and then billions that play games on their mobile phone. So with Muria being the underlying system, and Meta Rush, one of the games that they're building right now, they not just onboard a couple people, but they also allow more and more different projects in order to join their system. Which then, if one of the games pops off, increases the value by a lot. You know it's not financial advice. But when it comes to crypto gaming and NFTs and all of that, being early in a game can be really valuable. Simply imagine, they would have statistics on how many games you played, how active you are, and they reward people with an upcoming skin or token or anything rare in there. That can be worth a lot. In CSGO you have skins that go for up to a million dollars, and it just pixels on a screen, that are bound to your Steam account, which can be banned at any time. And here, in crypto, you would have things in your wallet, which can't really be banned. I mean, you can send the NFT from one wallet to another and sell it that way in the worst case. And if you're looking for something that is free to play, fun to play with a couple friends here and there, that is also Web3 focused and still in season one, Meta Rush might be fun to play. They have a download button in the top right corner as well, where you can play with Hyperplay right now or add it to the wishlist on Epic Games. And with pretty simple requirements of just a one series in NVIDIA, pretty much any computer from the last 10 years or so can run this for sure. All you gotta do is you need a Maria wallet on Epic ID if you play it on the Epic Game Store. If you play it through Hyperplay Gaming, you'll figure out how as well. I'm pretty sure you can click the links and read the words and then see how you like it. In the worst case, you play a game for free and just use a couple minutes of your time in order to check it out. And maybe you're good at this and end up winning, because I can tell you, from similar games. I don't think I ever finished first in any of those rounds. But you know, maybe? Maybe I can a meta rush if I have a good server connection. We will see. Have you heard about those tap games in Telegram where you can do like simple daily tasks like play mini games and like tweets and all that? and you get free coins. There's one that launched a couple days ago called TapCat. It's part of the Telegram ecosystem as you can play mini games in Telegram in the chat. This one is completely free. So there is no sign up. You simply use Telegram, done. You don't connect your wallet. You don't have to pay anything. There's no token that you buy. It's simply tap and complete task. They launched like two and a half days ago on July 11th. All you do is farm airdrop points. As a short explanation, some of these games in here, like Not for example, gave you lots of points. And if you were to believe this threat, this person made $82,000 by being early in those tap games. Ton as an ecosystem is growing day by day, and there's a whole bunch of garbage in there, but based on people that I follow following them, and me hearing about this a couple times now since yesterday could potentially mean that this one is worth looking into as well. I first wanted to use this on desktop and it doesn't work, so it makes it harder for cheaters, which means you do need to use your phone. When you sign up for that, there's like a short tutorial of like three steps. There's no sign up, there's no count. It's simply click on the tasks that you can do, which are mostly follow people on Twitter or like like things on Twitter. So you can just on your phone, switch over to Twitter, open it there, click on like, swap back, and then you get your points automatically. For that, they have like 25, 30 different tasks in there. Then there's this mini game where in these nine fields, there are eight 10 token rewards as well as one bomb. So you can flip some of these over. If you click on end, you get the points. If you click on the bomb, you don't get any points. There's a daily reward of 50 tokens, I think. And when you have the app open, you can click on start farming and then per second you get like 0.1 tokens. So if you leave your phone on for like 10 minutes, you can farm a bunch of points. If you cancel out or you close the application in Telegram, it doesn't give you any points, but that's about it. So this means every single person in the world who has a phone, which is almost every person in the world, can do it. It costs nothing but your time. It is completely free. And you start farming airdrop points that in the future could be worth a lot. A few years ago in the last bull run, when I used Ethereum name services, I also farmed airdrop points, which were worth, I think, like 6,000 something dollars. And that's something I had to pay for. In this case, it's completely free, but just like similar tapping games, those free points could be worth a lot. And in the worst case, you lost like eight minutes per day. And you're probably on your phone anyways. If you watched this video, you could have followed along and do all the tasks in the meantime. And overall, I want to focus more on things that are free to use so everybody can participate. One of the other games that I looked forward a lot last year was Alluvium, because this went from, I think, $30 to like 90, 150. You're from like $40 down here to 150 at the peak. And Illuvium is like a love-hate type of relationship, and here's why. 
I like the idea a lot because in Alluvium you have a couple different things, like three main things that all play into each other. You have the overworld over here, you have Alluvium Zero, which also looks like an O, and then you have, I think it's called Alluvium Arena, something like that. So this is like a city builder, you know, you have your city, you farm resources and you're happy. You can use that in order to use your character in the overworld to farm Alluvials Pokemon. And the Pokemon can be then used in a TFT type game called Arena over here to farm additional rewards. So you can just play one of them, you can play all three. You can farm resources down here in the Alluvium Zero version of the city builder and then sell the resources to people in the overworld as they need the resources in order to farm the Pokemon, which can then be used in Arena. And everything plays into each other. There might be another game mode since then, and there have been a ton of different updates. Upon what I've seen when it comes to the requirements, I think the lowest requirement was like a 3080 or something as a graphics card for your PC. And that's just unrealistic for most people. So I'm not sure how things changed since then, but once everything in here is fully released, as they have a release date trailer, or which they say July 25th, so in a couple days from now, we will see are there any crashes, what graphics card is required, how much fun is it? How much money can you make? Because on the marketplace, when you were to buy different land for Alluvium Zero or you bought some of the Pokemon NFTs, unless you fully understand how the economy in there works and there is no real economy because the game isn't live yet, there's a good chance you will lose money. So for that, if you're interested in Alluvium, and you probably watched a lot more videos on that than I did, don't spend money on it yet. Wait and see what makes sense first. Because you could say, for example, Oh wow, they have an ice bear, and the ice bear looks cool, but maybe this is complete garbage. And you buy this for like a dollar now, and then you can sell it for three cents later, because this one isn't in the meta. Plus, it always depends on how many players are there, is it going to be hyped, and is it affordable. Because on the marketplace, they sell different land NFTs, and I think I bought a tier 4 NFT before, I just flipped it. And that peaked at like $26,000 at some point, for a game that isn't out yet. So there's the potential that all of this makes a lot of money, but we'll find out. And then lastly, there is Mavia. Mavia is up by 40% since last week, back to 100 mil market cap. And you could say, in, in the easiest terms possible, it's Web3 Clash of Clans. They also have a Twitter space with Alluvium fairly soon, reached 5 million downloads over here. And most importantly, it's available on your phone. So instead of having to use your computer, having certain requirements, graphics card, CPU, all of that, you can use your phone, done. It's being built on base, and base is growing more and more as a whole ecosystem. And I think when it got released, it only took players like a month or so in order to max out the base. And with a $100 million valuation in which you can farm the token, you know, buy it, sell it, trade it, all of that, this is still a solid way to get into crypto gaming, especially because it's free to download. And you might even be good at this if you ever played Clash of Clans. Now, in my case, I never played Mavia, to be fair. And that is because I used to play Clash of Clans, was maxed out, like, eight years ago, I think, when it only went to Town Hall 10. And then eventually I kind of lost, lost interest in mobile gaming, all of that, and started playing League of Legends instead, which was a big mistake. But if you're into mobile gaming or want to try it out, which has probably the best lineup of partners I've seen from all the different games out there, then check it out, watch some videos. In the worst case, you find something that might be fun, but you can uninstall right after. And with that being said, overall thoughts for gaming. I think this one is undervalued, simply because if you look at Steam and how many people play games just through Steam, and how much money games like CSGO or League of Legends or whatever make, this is growing year by year. Pretty much every guy I know ever plays games. I don't think there's a single guy that doesn't play games. And the guys that don't play games, they invest their money into things to grow, which in this case would be games. So I don't want to say buy it, it goes up. But anything that builds the infrastructure that is here for mass adaption could go fairly well. Now, I personally, on this entire list of things, I only have tokens from any of the nodes that found them, and I bought Beam. Reason for Beam is, I like the name, I like the color, and jokes aside, this guy is a top 100 holder of Beam. I also found his wallet, which is not that difficult to find. And based on his performance history, he seems to know what he is doing when it comes to investment stuff, and he's heavily into Beam as one of the few gaming coins. And I'm pretty sure if all the smart money wallets buy this, then they probably did a lot more research to understand that this one is good long term, better than I could do. Therefore, I took a certain percentage of my portfolio, maybe like, I think like 6%, give or take, depending on the day, put it into this and let it rest. My largest hold is still Bitcoin, because then 
I don't have to do anything ever and don't have to worry and I simply wake up and it only goes up and down by like 10% max. And if it dips down by like 10%, you don't lose all your gains. But if any of the altcoins dip from 20 cents down to 6 cents, while Bitcoin goes down by 10%, then you feel like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe this is gambling and we're losing money here. And those are my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Links to everything down below. I'll see you fairly soon with more videos on games in particular. I think I'll slowly get more into gaming again to find some of the gems for this bull run that might be the next Crypto Blades, which, by the way, doesn't make any money. That being said, have a good rest of your day and take care.